Yes, hello everyone. Welcome to this channel, the Merchant Consumptors and Tutors. Your go-to channel for everything about constructions, calculations, engineering, structural engineering. Just name it about engineering. This is a one-stop shop for everything you need. So you can go to the, my gallery to see so many videos I've done on construction. It actually helps construction engineers and even designers. So today we'll be looking at a very very important topic, which is how to estimate. Mm -hmm the number of props to hold the slab just from the image you can see you can see the slab forms and then the props are the ones standing look at the skeletal and just other the other pictures and then look at the labeling of what a prop is we have the top plate we have the base plate the inner tube outer tube and we have the thread so winding and adjusting then the pins that are used to adjust for different stages so looking at this um topic it is very very important talk and then so we are going to be able to understand this okay so first thing first we need to understand what aqua props are so aqua props are false works like they're used for false works they're temporary vertical steels support used to hold form work systems for a slab <coughs> right so it holds this form work in preparation for the concrete and the casting so it holds it when the concrete and the steel burns together to be strong enough after 28 days then it can be removed so they are just stable in height and are crucial for safely supporting primary beams beneath the slab plywood i i, I believe this explanation is um, clear enough right so Aqua props are just, they are not just, they are the support system that actually supports these forms in such a way that they don't collapse. They support it, irrespective of the height. So they are adjustable, depending on the height. There are different types of aqua props. So depending on the height, we have different um, types. <coughs> and then the safe working loads, depending on the load that is coming on the slab. So you need to provide the support, including the spacing to be able to support it. So the main features of an aqua prop so we have the outer tube that is the lower part of the aqua prop it is in two pieces one is the lower one is at the lower part the other one at the uh, upper part so the upper part is the one that is the inner tube so that one is adjustable to where have the pins then the color and the pins these are the ones that is used to adjust the height depending on how you want to stretch it or the height you are going to then the threaded collar is for adjusting. Just as you can see the image shown here, you can see the labeling, what each of these stands for. So the aqua props are actually very, very important to be able to help us achieve stability that we intend to get while our wet slab is um, undergoing um, gain of strength. All right? So standard sizes of props now there are various style and sizes and then so the things you need to consider while you are selecting a prop is the height that the prop needs to reach and the weight it needs to support two crucial things the height it needs to reach and the weight to support now the height if the prop and the height is already at the top then there's a problem so we have different size you have size zero size one size two size three size four so from the image there size zero one to one point eight three size 1 1.75 to that so each of it has different sizes right the length at which they can go so the higher you go the lesser the strength it is right so instead of if you have a height of let's say two meters and you're going for size number one and your size number one ends at 32 point something you need to go for size number three so that <clears throat> when you extend it will still be able to support the load it is expected to carry. I don't know if we get this illustration I'm trying to paint here. So, now let's look at a very, very sharp um, example so that we'll be able to understand this, how to estimate the um, the type of prop we need and then the, the load it needs to support. So we are given these dimensions, um, the slab dimension as um, 12 meters by 8 meters by 0.5 meters thick right so block dimension 
150 millimeter by 2 to 5 by 450. Right, so unit weight of concrete is 24 kN per meter cube. Form workload 0.5 kN per meter cube. Now, unit weight of block 20 kN meter per meter square. Then the floor to floor height. And the surface floor to the surface height. You need to support is 2.85 meters. The spacing of props is 1 meter by 1 meter. So in both direction, in longitudinal and in transverse direction, 1 meter. Then the aqua prop size, we are looking at size number 3. Then the prop safe working load. We are using 24 kN. You will see where we got this 24 kN. But these are the parameters that we are going to be working with while we solve this um, problem or this tax in front of us. So we will to select this accurate size of prop that is needed. <coughs> if the size we have proposed to use is not enough, we'll go for the higher one. You know, we said we are going to use size number three. So we can go to size number four. Right. So first thing first is to classify the loads. And then classify, classification of the load is um, need to classify it as dead load and life load. So for dead load, we have three dead loads that is supposed to support. First is the self-weight of the slab. The prop is going to support that. The formwork self-weight and also the load from block. You know, sometimes most people build after casting, they start loading the block. So we need to um, calculate for that so that before that 20 this when the whole prop will be removed. We need to consider this. So the first thing is to check the sl uh, slab self-weight. And then given as the unit weight of concrete multiplied by slab thickness. So we have 24 multiplied by 0 0.15. And we have 3.6 kN per meter square. Then the block wall load. Same thing, unit weight of block multiplied by slab width. Slab thickness, well, I gotta, so we have 20 multiplied by 0 0.15. Now that's 3.0 kN per meter square. Then for the form workload, we have it as 0 0.5 kN per meter square. So total dead load, having calculated this, we have it as 3.0 plus 3.6 plus 0 0.5. So we have that 7.10 kN per meter square. That is all about the dead load that this thing is going to carry. You know, because it said self weight of the slab, self weight of the formwork, and then the block that will be on top <coughs> while the prop is still supporting the slab for as long as 28 days. So the next thing is to look at is the life load, life or imposed load. Now, workers and tools will be placed on this. Those are available load. So you are using the 1.5 kN per meter square as the life load. So now we need to compute the ultimate load. That is going to factor, put factor of safety. So the ultimate load is 1.4, according to BS8110, 1.4 dead load plus 1.6 life load. That's 1.4 GK plus 1.6 QK. So solving this, we are having our ultimate load as 9.94 plus 2.4. So it gives us a total of 12.34 kN per meter square. That is the ultimate load we are actually um, dealing with now. And this is the free body diagram of the load that is expected to to come on top of the props right okay so we are going to the next stage and the next stage is to compute the load supported per prop this is very very crucial we need to know the load that each prop is carrying right so we are considering from our question we said we need the prop to be spaced as one meter by one meter and then looking at the image here you can see the props as the rectangular part and then the each of the slab you can see the arrow the slab is divided by four one meter by one meter so it's divided by into four parts so each of them is going towards the arrow um, going towards the prop so you, as you can see let's take it one after the other now the load on slab supported by prop at the edge as you can see the one at the edge there you can see it's just the Unit uh, ultimate load divided by four times one because it's only one part that is going towards the edge there. 
so we have it as 3.085 for the interior you can see the yield line four places going into it so 12.34 divided by 4 multiplied by 4 is giving us that then the one at the mid span it is multiplied by 2 so this illustration gives you what um, you need to know about how load is being transferred on the prop so first thing is to look at each of the prop is getting a quarter of the load let's say you have one meter by one meter right so each of them is getting okay so let's continue check safe working load per prop look at this chart here you can see for prop number one the safe working load depending on the height it has different height and you can see the prop number number two number three number four and then so if you are going at let's say 2.74 and you're using prop number three you can see the safe working load there as 31 if i'm going since we are using 2.85 as our floor to floor surface so we are going for the 3.05 ohm and so the safe working load is 24 kilo per meter square that's how we got it you know i said this in the beginning that from that we are going to show you how we got that so also looking at this um chart you can see everything computed to so depend on the prop and the height you are going to the safe working load needs to be known and then you now use it to work back if by chance your spacing is not enough you need to change prop or you reduce the spacing because the spacing is wide enough so this next stage is to check if whatever we have done what the prop you have chosen is enough and the spacing is enough so now you want to check the utilization ratio so this utilization ratio shows that you have the factor of safety but you don't want to use everything like it's not it is unwise to use 100 percent of the factor of safety so now load on the interior prop because that is the most critical one 12.34 divided by safe working load of the prop at 2.85 you know we said you are using 20 and uh, 3.05 there and this is 24 so we have it as 0 0.5142 and that is 51.42 percent of the safe working load and the safe working load is between 60 to 70 so if it's less than that then the safe ma the margin is okay we are good prop number three is good for this um job right okay so we'll move over to the next calculation and that um, we'll be looking at we want to calculate the quantity of props that is needed now since we know that this load this prop is going to be able to carry this load and this piece is okay so we want to know how many so along the 12 meter span we are having it as length divided by spacing plus one right so the length is 12 meters divided by spacing the spacing is one meter by one meter so one meter plus one so when you compute it, you'll be having 13 numbers of pickups along the 12-meter span. Then you also compute for the other direction, maybe the longitudinal and transverse. So for the transverse, that is the 8-meter span, it is the width divided by the spacing. Right, and the width is 8 meters divided by 1.0 plus 1. Right, so going by this we should be able we'll be able to we'll be getting nine numbers of props right so we have computed this along the 12 meter span we're having 13 numbers of props along the eight meter span we're having nine numbers of props now i want to know the total props needed so it should be number of props along the longitudinal direction that is the 12 meters multiplied by the number of props along the eight meter span and then for my initial calculation we have it as 13 multiplied by 9 right so so 13 multiplied by 9 will be giving us a total number of 117 props but then we need to look at consistencies and we could look at um, um maybe the ones that are bad or some places that we actually need us to prop more in case so we're adding 10 percent contingency 
So we'll have it since it is a uh, 117, so 117 multiplied by 1.10. So having it as 128.7, approximately 130 props. As you can see in the image, the props supporting the forms to carry the slab. Right? So, summary of everything we have been doing, everything we have said. I'm saying the slab dimension I was given was um, 12 meters multiplied by 8 meters multiplied by 0 0.15 millimeter meter thick sorry now the total dead load that we estimated was 7.10 which is that of the slab self width of the slab of the framework and also of the block on top of it then the life load we considered workers and machines or tools being placed on it so we are considering we considered 1.5 kN. then the ultimate load that is the factored load by putting factor of safety of 1.4 for the dead load and 1.6 for the life load. So having a total load on the slab as 12.34 or total load on the prop. Now the ultimate load on prop at 1 meter by 1 meter spacing is 12.34 using the most critical that is receiving more load as the one at the interior. Then the prop safe working load at 2.85 is 24 kN. And then when we checked it, it was okay since it's 51.4% utilized less than the 70% utilization mark. Then total number of props that we needed is 130 numbers. Right? So I, I believe we'll be able to understand the placement of props and how to calculate the safe working load you don't just use any kind of props and then you just set it just to support the slab if the prop or the height you are going is too is too much you don't need a number one or number two prop because the higher you go the lesser the strength is so you need to a higher one and then the adjustable um and thread you need to adjust in such a way that the prop is properly standing right so Thank you for watching this video. I, I, I believe you gained value for this. I'll be bringing you another set of construction 